Okay, last 3DS Max video. Um, I had mentioned that there was only one more thing to show. I was wrong. There's always one more thing to show. So I've got two more items to cover in this video. Um, and this is simply, okay, if I'm going to have a hammer slam down, I, you know, I've got to have something for it to hit. Um, and in doing that, kind of presented one more interesting option, and that is affecting a pivot point of an object. So I thought we'd do one more step in terms of animation and look at pivot points. And this is also going to be relative to, you know, if I have a door opening, I need the door not to pivot about its center, but about the hinge. Um, unless, of course, the center is the hinge, which would be weird, but doable. Okay, so let's look at this object. If it slams down, how would I animate this board jumping up? And, well, the reality is there is a physics engine inside of 3ds Max, and I could kind of build it that way. But let's assume that I don't want to get that complicated, that I just want to go ahead and build this as a basic kind of animation. Okay, so I know that my hammer is going to come in contact right here, keyframe 57. And I'm seeing that right here in this front viewport. So if I select this board, I can see right now I've got a problem. The rotation is going to happen about this location, not about the box that it is presumably resting upon. I also know that the object, the rotation, again, is relative to the view, or even if I set up relative to the world, not relative to the object. So I want to set that to local. Now my axis is set up to the world, and now I want to move the pivot point of this object over this box. So to do that, I'm going to move off of the Create tab and onto Hierarchy. In Hierarchy, I can activate Effect Pivot Only. So this central point that's defining where the object is at in space is called a pivot. If I turn on Activate Pivot Only, I'm set to local. I'm going to move it along its axis. And even for that matter, you know, if I look at it in this view, I could even move it to the center of the object. It was on an edge. Um, and I might want to come just a little bit further along this way so the motion looks right. So it kind of looks as though it's pivoting about this. I'm going to turn off effect pivot only. And now, as the hammer strikes, I could affect the motion of that object by pivoting around this location. So let's turn on auto key. I'm going to set a base key at 57 and now I'm going to toggle forward. And I want it completely slammed down at keyframe 60. So I'm going to activate rotate, move it down, 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 and that's where I'm at at keyframe 60. Whack. Cool? Now, okay, I'm defying a little bit of physics. One plane is moving under another, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there's a lot of things to fix. That's where animation gets really complicated and kind of also a lot of fun. Okay, um, so we'll deal with that stuff later. But last, let's look at the actual speed of this motion hammer hitting board. Okay, so I'm going to turn off auto key. And let's build a preview. To do that, it's located underneath Tools, and it's called Grabbing a Viewport. Now, I could come in and say um, Rendering, and I could actually render out the full animation um, using whatever render engine that I choose inside of Max, whether it's Mental Ray or um, whatever. But you should know from Revit and other 3D programs, that's going to take a little bit of time. I can also just use the OpenGL viewport, this guy, and render it out, um, which will be much, much faster. So I'm going to select this viewport. I want to make sure this is the guy that I'm going to be working with. Tools, Grab Viewport, Create Preview Animation. I'm going to do the Active Time Segment. So again, it's going to render out from 0 to 70, 0 to 70. I'm going to make sure that I am using 100% um, of my resolution, 320 by, 4, 320 by 240. So again, that's still a really small kind of dude right there. Um, I want to make sure that I am rendering out my perspective viewport. So again, I can select any of my viewports. I want to be rendering out the perspective one, and I'm going to hit Create. It's going to take a second, do it, and then it's going to give me 
a very rough looking, but real time, you know, how fast this is actually going to move animation. Okay, so your larger, more complex animation, very important that you go through that process. Okay, so really simple to do. Um, and I can sort of export that as its own movie to watch later. Um, essentially, it just wrote that to a temporary file. Um, yeah, that's about it for animation. Um, it builds up, it gets more complicated as you move along, but those are gonna get you through the basic commands of animation. Um, pay very close attention when you're working on this to timing and motion, easing things in and easing things out. I would strongly suggest you look at the 12 principles of animation from some old, old school Disney stuff. Um, you'll find a few videos on YouTube about it. Um, it's really useful information to just understand the basics of creating the illusion of objects moving in space.